captured reports actually from Citigroup and Wells Fargo, whose posts uh, were largely in line with market expectation. And today, it was the turn of two more Wall Street giants, Bank of America and Morgan Stanley. Well, Neda Torfik standing by on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with all the numbers for us. Neda, uh, let's begin with uh, the second biggest uh, US bank by assets, Bank of America, beating expectations. Yeah, exactly, Alice. And just so I don't get these numbers wrong, let me just bring them to you. So we saw the bank's revenue rise 4.3%, which brought up profit 9%. Uh, and if you look, their trading revenue was up. You had uh, the bank's chief financial officer saying, uh, in terms of credit, they're still seeing a lot of customer activity, uh, despite low oil prices still weighing on the energy sector. Uh, and if you look at their portfolio, it's something like 2.5% of outstanding loans are exposed to the energy sector. Uh, so Bank of America, not too worried about that doing well this quarter uh, and also it's really uh, what we've seen across the banks is that uh, they've really weathered this last quarter when the markets have been very volatile uh, by cutting in expenses and also uh, the legal kind of expenses that they have been dealing with uh, have also lessened this time so that really helped uh, Bank of America forward if you look they've been splashing billions of dollars uh, in uh, the commercial and investment banking side uh, of the bank Alice. and uh, Neda more Morgan Stanley also citing lower legal costs as helping to swing it back into profit in the fourth quarter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you look, they've uh, basically cut 1,200 jobs. And Morgan Stanley really impressing investors by saying that they're looking at uh, billions more to cut. Uh, if you look at one of the bright spots for Mer Morgan Stanley in terms of revenue growth, uh, it was really mer mergers and acquisitions. Last year was a record year for mergers and acquisitions. Uh, and say, so they were able to lift uh, their profit in that respect. But again, it's, it's going back to co cutting costs and these legal fees going down, uh, really helping Morgan Stanley forward. Uh, and into 2016, with that $1 billion, uh, more in cost cutting, we'll have to see if that also helps the bank. So, Neda, when we look at the reporting season as a whole, casting our memories back to last week, uh, JP Morgan, Citigroup and Wells Fargo, all of the banks are doing rather well at the moment, particularly when we see all of this through the lens of higher interest rates over in the States. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what investors were really worried about. I mean, the stocks um, of banks have really taken a beating this past year, uh, and investors were really worried with how market volatility and low oil prices were going to be affecting them. And we've seen the banks really anticipate this, uh, putting more money aside for if, if loans went uh, bad, also cost cutting. Uh, and also, if you look the last quarter, they did some banks get a little bit of a boost from interest rates uh, rising. Uh, and if the Fed continues to raise interest rates into 2016, which now is debatable how many rate rises we might see, whether it's two next year or four, depending on um, their confidence in the markets. Uh, the banks are really looking forward to finally being able to charge more on those loans and to boost uh, that revenue. Uh, so we've seen the banks weather it so far pretty well. A lot of banks even beating expectations in this last quarter. Um, and we'll just have to see in 2016 uh, if the leaders are basically able to manage expectations the same way. Yeah, indeed. Now, always good to check in with you. Neda Torfik there for us uh, on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. They're trading about to get underway. Now, uh, having uh, earlier received a bit of a boost thanks to slightly higher than expected uh, UK inflation numbers out, sterling, that has since slumped to a seven-year low against the dollar. That was following uh, Mark Carney's speech, particularly on his warning words over the spillover effect of a slowing Chinese economy. And on the market, well, interestingly, Britain's uh, FTSE 100 hit a session high whilst Carney was answering questions earlier up uh, some 2.2 percent it's dipped down a little bit but still in positive territory still up some 1.86 percent and the brent crude price still under 30 dollars a barrel there that's all from me back in an hour's time see you then thanks alice good stuff alice thank you yeah let's uh, check out the weather now louise lear has got the latest forecast for us hi louise hi there ben we've all been talking about the feel of the weather haven't we winter has arrived so far this week it does look as though we're heading for change towards the weekend but just look at this morning in the highlands we had the lowest overnight uh, minimum so far this winter with minus 12.4 Celsius, but not to be outdone in parts of Oxfordshire and Benson, minus 8.4 Celsius as well. So it's cold out there, however you look at it. There is a blanket of cloud across parts of Northern Ireland, Northern England. That'll continue through the night tonight, but to the north and the south, again, clear skies, hard frost likely, those temperatures falling away like a stone. In fact, we'll be talking the numbers again, I'm sure, across Scotland as temperatures are likely to fall down to minus 
minus 12 Celsius. And with some lying snow, still there could be some ice around as well. Further south, it looks as though the lowest values are likely to be further south and west across Wales and the southwest, down to minus 7, minus 8 degrees. Some ice and even the potential perhaps for some fog, some of it freezing, which is going to be pretty tricky if we get that out on the roads first thing tomorrow morning. Your BBC local radio stations will have all the updates for you. That freezing fog could linger up for quite some time as well. So that could make for a rather miserable start to the day. And even by 8 o'clock in the morning, temperatures still below freezing and some of the fog really could be quite an issue. So allow a bit of extra time for your journey. There will be some dry weather around. We keep that blanket of cloud. So it'll be a cold grey start despite the temperatures just above freezing. It's not going to feel that much pleasant, uh, more pleasant either. Maybe we could have a problem with some fog across Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland. Very, very cold indeed into the far north. So as we continue through the day tomorrow, eventually we should get to see some sunshine with a bit of luck across central and western areas and also up into the north, just a little bit of nuisance cloud sitting across northern England, maybe into East Anglia as well. Temperatures though on the low side, two, three, four degrees at the very best, perhaps just a little bit milder out to the west. And the reason for that is this change that's going to start to arrive by the end of the day on Thursday. A stronger southerly wind and some rain ahead of it, some fog first thing, but some dry sunny weather and still quite cold but it's this weather front that comes in it's going to introduce mild air from the southwest it will slowly meander its way across the country perhaps lingering that cold air into east anglia and the southeast for the bulk of friday but the change arrives during friday some wet windy weather milder behind with 11 degrees five, six degrees at the very best in the southeast corner. That rain will move through and then for all of us as we move into the weekend it looks likely to be less cold. Let your new year start with the...